My next guest is a New York City-based entertainment contributor and the host of the Red Carpet Rendezvous, a weekly podcast for all things entertainment, film, television, and Broadway. And there's so much we're going to go ahead and talk to my next guest about. She's also an entertainment reporter and also does a lot of work in marketing. We're going to talk with right now, Lauren Collin. Lauren, thanks for joining us on the Broadcasters Podcast. Thanks for having me. So I mentioned the entertainment podcast happens every week, Red Carpet Rendezvous. It's where you chat with celebrities about upcoming films, television, and Broadway shows. There's so much of that happening right now, and I am sarcastic because we're in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> I know. We're on the way well, out of it, but there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, you know, it's actually, yes. Yes, and it's, it's interesting because um, there's a little bit more happening than everybody thinks, um, mainly because there was a lot of stuff in production before and they had to edit it, package it, and, you know, and, and push it out. So I am still covering movies, still covering television shows, and, and again, you'd be surprised at, at how many are filming right now. Um, my last episode was with Christina Moses, who is an actress on um, the show A Million Little Things mm -hmm. on ABC, and so that's currently filming in Vancouver. And I was actually just shocked to hear that they get tested uh, three to four times a week for COVID, like the invasive up the nose test. It's kind of crazy. Um, oh, and, and that, you know, so she the mentioned that, that studios... it's going to take. And... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. Um, she actually mentioned that, you know, they film in Vancouver and last season, season two of A Million Little Things took about six months to film. And now with all the precautions that they have to take, things are, are you know, taking a little bit longer. So they're going to be in Vancouver for about nine months because of COVID. And I can imagine there's not, I mean, there's, there, again, there's a lot of production still being done in areas where there's openings already coming out. I know that uh, in England, the UK, the, the BBC actually put everybody under quarantine for sets at a long period of time so they can continue to have testing and keep everything yes. very safe. And there was a lot of parameters being put in by the Hollywood studios and by the, the labor unions to make sure everybody can get back to work. And I think that was all finally approved and accounted for. So we're starting to see that back. Besides the, the podcast, I also don't want to, you know, sell anything short. You also co own the media production company, Magic Shack, Magic S-H-A-K. And that's yes. where you run operations and digital marketing efforts yes. of which many of those are based in New York City. Yes. Now, with the pandemic, the format of your show and the approach of on-location work must have undergone some significant changes. So talk to me about the adjustments you have been able to, you've been able to make and how the changes have been working out so far. So it's, it's funny, um, you know, this whole podcast premise, as, as you know, was me being on different red carpets and bringing mm -hmm. that live audio um, to a podcast with a bit of a narrative. And I think a lot of people really liked that because it was, it was rare. So um, yeah, with, with COVID-19, you know, I remember in March, I, um, I had an interview set up with, with a director over Skype um, for this film called Human Capital that just came out with Liev Schreiber, and it's a great flick. Mm -hmm. um, but it was my first Skype interview, and I was like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> I, like, really didn't like it. I was like, I'm really more of, like, an in-person um, interviewer. You know, I like to connect with that person. And, you want the junkets. Just... You want to sit down with, like, every actor oh, and actress yeah. behind that black 100%. wall, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I want the press days. I want the junkets. I want the red carpets, you know? So I did this interview via Skype and, and that's when Corona like wasn't, re it was a thing, but it wasn't really a thing, you know? Yeah, so I was like, yeah. Oh, I hope, you know, it gets better after this. And little did I know uh, that would be my new life basically. So with that being said, um, I think that a lot of us had to adapt really quickly. And a lot of the PR companies were wonderful about saying, Hey, this movie's coming out. Um, we're going to get you know, X, Y, Z people over zoom for you, or we're going to do a virtual junket. So, um, I think my next one was with this actor, Christian Kane, who had a new show coming out called almost paradise. And, um, you know, at first the company had pitched me back and like, I don't know, maybe it was like February. And they're like, do you want Christian Kane? He's in LA, you know? And I'm like, ah, oh, I really prefer in person. So I'm good. Mm -hmm. Thank you though. And then, you know, Corona happened and I was like, you know what? That sounds oh. great because I have a feeling that, yeah, it's going to be like this for a while. So, you know, I, I think that where we all have zoom fatigue, right? We all, we all are tired of this. Yeah. I mean, people are masturbating on zoom now. It's kind of <laughs> ridiculous with what's going on, but you know what I'm saying? I won't, yeah. I won't name names, but everybody should know that at this point. <clears throat> um, there was some legal contributor from CNN. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes, exactly. Um, wow. so, so I, 
I will say that my um, outreach, my celebrity outreach, uh, it, it was actually quite nice that I was able to get people um, that I maybe wouldn't normally be able to get because they were sitting at home doing nothing. Right. I just remember how excited I was to interview um, Montel Williams and like Malcolm uh, McDowell. I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. And these are, this is within the last three months. Um, you know, I was, I was thrilled and I don't think that I would have had the same type of opportunity to have, you know, 20, 25 minutes with them, um, in person. So, so it's had its ups and downs, but I will say, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to mask up and, and get on a red carpet with a boom microphone. <laughs> no, exactly. But I can imagine part of, there's a bit of a, a dynamic where one part of the celebrities are going to try to venture out on the internet because they need to get some exposure. They have to feel the stardom has to be there. They need to feel the appreciation of their audience. So there are going to be those that are going to do that. But then others, and I want to ask you about this later, about the fact they might not have the glam. They might not have that yep. look, the familiarity of what you see on screen or on stage, that it's not there. So they're going to be a little bit hesitant to do that. I can imagine that really is a parallel you have to deal with it on a regular basis. Now, about you, first of all, uh, I do see you some video right now, and I must say I love the view of the flat or where your loft or whatever you're working from in New York City, I'm imagining, correct? Thank you. Love it. Yeah, and, yeah correct. But then <laughs> New York you, City. But you've gotten too familiar with it. You've been sitting there too long, you're pretty much, right? So I want to know about yourself. Uh, well, I actually – I went to New Hampshire. So this is sort of for oh. six months. I came back in September, but yes. Oh, good. Okay. Well, at least you got yourself away. So yeah. I want to know about how you personally handle this extended quarantine from what you had to do. Because we here in Florida, you know, just from a New York to Florida uh, understanding, we've been seeing more New Yorkers visiting Florida more than we have during a normal snowbird tourist season, right? Yeah. And what made much of what New York is New York has changed. And that's what's unfortunate. So the things that celebrities, the reasons of being in New York, that kind of, the, what it is that made it, made it the greatest city of the world, it's starting to change. And I want to know what your personal count is. If you're starting to mm -hmm. see that they're, they've been talking about an exodus. So a lot of people might be vacating apartments or leaving the yeah. city altogether, might not come back. A lot of issues when it comes to the mayor and the governor and what, what amount of roles they might've played into it just on a personal uh perspective yeah. what can you tell me about what's going on over there and how it's been looking so at? yeah so i did leave the city for about six months um i have two young children so mm -hmm. that was the main reason that we left um my husband and i even said you know we would have been able to stick it out here if it was just us but with the kids it's hard in a new york city apartment you know my daughter is four so she definitely would have been affected you know going oh. to school one day yeah. and then the next day us saying you can't even go outside because that's how bad it got here. I mean, it got like very bad, very eerie. Um, my son is two, so he wouldn't, he didn't really understand, but the best thing that we did was take them to New Hampshire and give them a sense of normalcy. Um, now that being said, New Hampshire is my hometown. I, I love it dearly, but I cannot live there right now. So I was <laughs> thrilled to come back despite uh -huh. everything I heard about the city. I was, you know, I was so excited. I got back here and um, it's, it's still, it's still New York, right? It's very frustrating that de Blasio and Cuomo can't seem to get along. It, you know, them bickering like children, just, it, it's sort of frustrating to New Yorkers because you're like, guys, you know, there's a lot at stake here with the city. Please just get along so we can get through this together. Right. Um, but I will say like, you know, there's a lot of garbage on the street. Sure. There's a lot of dog shit on the street. I don't understand yeah. why all of a sudden people can't clean up their dog shit, but um, it's again, it's still the city and it's still magical. I, I took my daughter to the Met the other day, tons of people on the steps. It's a beautiful day. Um, you know, the streets are, are filled with, with people dining and having drinks. And I actually think I was telling my husband, one of the best things that came out of COVID now is if you order from a restaurant, you can order their like specialty cocktails. So last night I had like a bottle of this like spicy margarita that, yeah, I mean, and it's actually, it's, they're decently priced too, because they'll be like, it's $40 and it's like a, an equivalent of like six cocktails. I'm like, uh, yeah. done, you know? So obviously I'm <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I'm not really a bartender. So that's actually been really cool, but yeah, I will say the city, you know, where, it, where it's still lacking, a lot of things, um, you know, obviously there's some big things like Broadway, um, you know, and the opera and, and uh, the ballet, but you know, it's like the Met is open. There's still things you can do. Um, so 
I would encourage people if, you know, if they have the means to stay in the city. And, and I do understand that some people had no choice, right? Like their yeah. jobs were here and now they're going to be out of work for a long time. So they had no choice but to leave. So there's a whole lot I want to get into right now. I'm going to go into, get into that kind of detail by detail with you. So first off, you mentioned Broadway. Yeah. So let me lay out yeah. for our listeners what's been happening in New York City in terms of stage and screen and entertainment. At least what I'm hearing from the industry rags and from the local papers there. New York Times reported that Broadway most recently is scheduled to remain closed at least through next May 30th, 2021, which will make it at least 444 days after all 41 theaters went dark as part of the effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus. The Broadway League, most recently, the trade organization that represents producers and theater owners, announced it was suspending all ticket sales through that date. And New York State now has done some things, like you said, some things are starting to reopen. There are some reopening guidelines now for movie theaters, which Governor Cuomo is allowed to reopen, except for New York City and other handfuls of counties in the state for the first time since March. So again, no red carpets, virtual press tours are, are now are the thing, uh, junkets you have as well. Uh, now talk to me now about the widespread changes to your connection to showbiz and Broadway and how well you are connected and you're, how well connected are you? We know about what's going on with you and how you handle quarantine, but how about those that you are able to connect with? How are they handling the aggressive city lockdown of the big apple? Like, much like your story, what would be theirs? Yes. Well, so for example, um, you know, I have two young kids, so, you know, I have some help with them and mm -hmm. she uh, is a fantastic nanny, a fantastic babysitter, but her one true love is acting and she moved oh. here to be on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, she, she kind of had to stop with the, the classes and the auditioning. Yeah. And um, it, it's funny because she is, she's a very bright and beautiful girl. So she found something else to do, uh, like teaching uh, kids music classes. Cause there's a lot of classes right now in the park and there's a lot of things, um, you know, that, or I, I, sorry, I should say there's very few things that performers can kind of do, you know, on the side right now that, that are in the wheelhouse of acting and singing. Um, I will say that a lot of performers I know are getting their real estate license or, or doing something else to try to make money in the meantime, because again, the Broadway league has said that, you know, Broadway's going to reopen in summer 2020, but we don't actually know. I mean, it was supposed to open Labor Day. It was supposed to yeah. open in June. So we're not sure. And, and I think that nobody really understands the severity of this um, and the, the amount of people that are out of work. I mean, Cirque du Soleil went belly up. That was over 4,000 jobs right there, oh. um, you know, at the very beginning of the pandemic that, you know, it, yeah. when it hit. And, and it's just interesting. It's, it's not just performers. It's like you said, it's, it's, it's technicians. It's, it's musicians. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's so hard to think that somebody just graduated from Juilliard, right? Like the school that grooms you to be like the most amazing performer right. that you can be. And, and here you are kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs. So it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's not like you can't get, it's not like jobs to go after, not there's places to audition. There's just nothing to go work on. And that's what's unfortunate to hear. And, no. And I feel my heart goes out to everybody out there. So let's go into more into Broadway about what's going on. And as you mentioned, how, when our show's coming back and what's been happening, because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Broadway makers, you know, the people that are creating the, the, the stage shows, they are shuffling around. So more yeah. from Broadway for the New York Times. A league statement suggested that producers imagine a staggered reopening rather than all theaters opening at once. Quote, dates for each returning a new Broadway show will be announced as individual productions determine the performance schedules for their respective shows. And then St. Martin said the reopening dates will be determined by producers working with theater owners. So soon after the statement was released, everybody started panicking a bit. MJ, yeah. a Michael Jackson bio musical that had planned to open this summer and then next spring announced performances will now begin next September. The revival of the music man starring Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster was scheduled for October. Then May 20th, 2021 will now begin performances on December 20th of next year and open February 10th, 2022. <laughs> yeah. And then farther along, several other shows scheduling reopening nights for next spring. Now got to go back to the drawing board. That's the new play of the minutes, Revivals of American Buffalo and Take Me Out. So again, no clear re path to reopening. Shutdown costing a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Backstage workers, performers, producers, the city itself, a lot of lost tax revenue. So again, even with that, you'd think the governor mayor will say, we need this money coming back in. I know. Do, do, when do you, I mean, if you're looking at right now as a reporter and looking to go ahead and cover Broadway or knowing those that are trying to get back to work again on Broadway, 
when do you see it actually coming back to yourself? What would be a prediction, the timetable you see? And do you think a lot of those involved on and off stage can continue to wait? Or are they going to just possibly forego presenting on Broadway and maybe Broadway goes somewhere else? Maybe off Broadway becomes more of a thing. Yeah. I mean, again, it's really hard to tell. I think at this point only because they have postponed it so much. And Broadway is one of those things where um, specifically, right, that I think it's something like 65% of ticket sales on Broadway are from tourists. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody's coming to New York City as a tourist anytime soon. I think after 9-11, it took about four years for New York City tourism to get back to where it was. Oh. So I would not be surprised if it took another four years for Broadway and ticket sales to get back to where it was. Um, and I guess the median age for Broadway theater goers is something like 60, which, you know, oh. that's been said that if you're 60 years old, the, you know, the coronavirus could affect you more so than if you're, if you're younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and theaters, again, I mean, theaters, they're very old, right? A lot of these theaters yeah. are super old and they're smaller than everybody thinks. Um, they're, you know, the bathrooms are small. And I don't know the last time what the last show you saw was, but I know that I am like squish in a theater, especially in the winter. If you have like your winter coat and you're sitting on it, mm -hmm. you were like right on top of people. So <laughs> there was really no way to socially distance in a Broadway theater. Um, so it's kind of like you can't have a show be viable if you have to socially distance. You can't have a show at 50% capacity. So my thinking on this is that while they say summer 2020, um, I think they have to wait until there is a vaccine and the vaccine is proven effective. Yeah. So um, I know there's a lot of things going on and, and Trump saying, you know, this, I've tried the vaccine, right. blah, blah, blah. I, I really don't, you know, I don't know. So it's really scary to think about. And, and I don't know how long these performers can, can hold out. It's, it's crazy to think that, again, I've seen, there's one girl from my hometown. She's always in a Broadway show. She's a dancer. She's been in like literally 10 shows. I just saw on Facebook that she, again, got her real estate license because that's what she's going to do for the next year. Um, which, you know, if that's another passion that you have, that's wonderful. Um, or if you just, you know, you have to make a living. <laughs> I just think but, that some stages yeah, are going to go I, somewhere else. I think outdoor stages become more of a thing again, if you're going to still do in New York City for right now. I don't think it's so much where, you know, you could, the, the Broadway types, the movie types could try to not push everything so far back. Assuming that, you know, they need a ramp to get mm -hmm. things back up because they're, they're afraid of losing money. I understand that part. And, you know, the movie theaters, they did try to get a little bit of a startup yeah. again. Tenet became a movie that was the first test to see. Can it be a movie that can come out and make significant money and bring people back to the theaters? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, how it, it only did so much. And, again, that's where I'm thinking, where summer stock becomes a thing more. Or there's other places where they do off-Broadway. I know South Florida, we have a number of uh, performing arts theaters that are now being reopened. So, down where I'm at, the Kravis Center is yeah. a great place to go. Or, you know, if you want to find, you know, ballet or theater or dance or just things like that, you know, there's, I think there's other spots where it's right. going to be at. But then again, just like New York City, Vegas is also hurting the same way. So that kind of entertainment to have, totally. it's just not there. Totally. And it's, it's just a tough spot. Now, well, moving along, can't, go ahead. You also can't recreate. Yeah, broad. As I say, you can't recreate Broadway, right? That's why it will be back, right? It will be strong. It will be back because that's something that you cannot recreate. So I think that that is sort of what we should keep in mind is, is knowing that it will be back. It's it's not going to go away. We just don't know. We just don't know when it's coming back. <laughs> yeah. And what and what the you know what it's going to look like. That's all. So I want to ask about this. If because I don't know how much importance it is for uh, what you do for being on location there mm -hmm. if you don't have the red carpets right away to go with. So I know you do a lot of work when it comes to theater and also with the work you do with Magic Shack, uh, the marketing yeah. firm. So uh, just as a possibility, where do you think the work could go if the theater scene takes too long to come back in your opinion? And also then more importantly, which I kind of asked, but mm -hmm. would it prompt any changes on your end and what your team is doing on covering Broadway or covering the industry itself? Would you ever feel a need to relocate just for the sake of business, because you'd have to find mm -hmm. to get yourself out there once again and have that presence, you'd have to go on the road and you might have to find somewhere outside of New York City. Would that be a possibility? Would that be something you'd have to think about? So it's not super necessary because 
for, for Magic Shack, we've been hired to do national tours and we've traveled. Okay. We did beautiful. We traveled to whatever city the cast was in. We did, um, we did summer, the Donna summer show. We did that mm-hmm. in Boston. So we travel. Um, I don't think it's, it's, it's necessary for us to relocate. Um, we also do a lot of corporate marketing shoots as well. So it's not just Broadway and, um, you know, and film, but, and it's interesting just because at the start of COVID also, we received a lot of inquiries about editing. So I don't know if you remember this, but there was like this Saturday night Seder that a bunch of different Broadway actors did and they were singing. So we edited that. And then there was um, Stephen Sondheim's birthday through broadway.com, which was like a huge big deal. Mm -hmm. And we edited part of that. I think it was, um, I don't remember the exact song that we edited, but you know, so there's a lot of things that, that we are doing that keeps us afloat. Um, and, and we don't necessarily have to be in New York city at the moment. Um, you know, we, we could be quarantined somewhere else, especially cause like you said, there's no red carpets, there's no press days. Um, but for me personally, being in New York city allows me to still, um, what's the word I'm looking for. I can still sort of rub elbows with people. I can still do can in still network. Yeah. I can still network. I can still do in-person appearances at radio stations. Um, You know, some of the news stations are not taking people, you know, in person right now, but it's Mm -hmm. always good for me to say, Hey, I can still come down, you know, if you need me, if you don't want to do it on Skype, you know, I'm, I'm right here. I'm local. So, you know, it's nice. Okay. Because it would be for me. I mean, I can see where there's a lot of things when it comes to negotiations. I mean, obviously any kind of office work that can still be done from remote. Uh, So the thing is, I guess the only thing would be helpful is that you don't probably have to do too much of the grind of getting to offices up and back and the kind of traffic you probably have now. It's probably gotten a little bit easier to get by, I would imagine. So there's, you know, again, the time saved is definitely something that you have. It's just I was thinking of the fact that there are projects that you wanted to do that if those were projects that really helped the, I mean, even for us, well, what I do with my full-time work, uh, run a new media company that does online radio podcasting, trade shows and parties. And when we don't have the conferences to work at or the events to go and throw, and that will be pretty good money makers. Again, it's trying to find what can we do to kind of keep afloat. And that's exactly what it's again. We had the gun kind of just reset and just reorganize and say, okay, we're still making money here, but what else can we do to make more? And you know, some of the things we've kind of saved on. So we've been able to work effectively as a, as effectively as a remote outlet. So it's worked out for us. So, you know, being in the office, that's great to hear. That's so great to hear. Thank you. And I hope that's the same thing for you guys as well. Uh, Yeah. So while some states have started to reopen, I want to talk about movies now. And movie exhibitions or the theaters, they have attempted to restart. Studios started beginning to postpone big releases, needed to draw audiences to theaters, since depressing theatrical revenue around the world, putting the industry's future in question. My theater chain that I have right next to my house, Regal Cinemas and Cinema World, they shut down once again. I guess they come back in December. And that was because of the No Time to Die Bond movie being pushed back the next year, among everything else that's being pushed back. Everybody's a bit of a panic. Right. Nothing's going to come back. AMC Theaters right now is being creative. They're staying open now. They're renting out individual theaters for screening. So that's pretty smart. I can give them some credit there. I saw that, like $100 or something. Right. <laughs> Something and I wonder what like movies that. you can watch on the screen, which is actually, that's yeah. a, kind of like a good idea. And if they give you the, like, if it's a party room and they give you popcorn and all the concessions, Hell that's a great yes. deal. That's Hell a great yes. deal. I, I am so all about that. I miss movie theaters so much. I did so go much. see Tenet and I watched it on the big, uh, what, what their, their version of an IMAX, the RPX was yeah. so great to go. I did not mind the mask. It was so clean in there, but uh, again, no other I'm new jealous. movies to watch. It was the yeah. fun. No other new movies to watch. And it was the first time. And I'm a person that watches movies. On opening night, 40, mm-hmm. 45 movies a year. That's I yeah. have a subscription to Regal. That's how big in the So do I. I'm an AMC. Ah. <laughs> I'm a Stubbs member. <laughs> and AMC's awesome yeah. too, let me tell you. Just the one yeah. I have is in downtown where I'm at and a little bit far. If they still ran later movies, but now the thing is, even when the movies came back up, they were closing early and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little bit tougher. So yeah. I, I want to ask then now how radical has publicity mm-hmm. been by the studios? Because obviously they're changing movies up. Movies are being brought up. Maybe some independent flicks. Things are out there. I mean, yes. I don't know, there's nothing out for four-year consideration. And by this time right now, you think they will be out, I guess, right? So, so 
yes, but let me let me just tell you, there are a lot more movies for you to watch than you think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I again, I am with you. I am always at the movies opening night or you know mm-hmm. opening weekend. Let's say I'm more of like a go to the movies by myself person on like a Sunday afternoon. I don't know. Um, nice. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I truly believe, just like you know, the Academy believes that there's no. There's no other place that's more magical than a movie theater to watch a film. Right. Um, you know, there have been a few movies. I don't know if you saw the 24th. Um, it's the, no. did you see that? Do you no, know which not. film I'm talking about? I, no, okay. I have to go looking, sorry. Well, that one is, um, it's written by Oscar winner Kevin Wilmot, who also wrote Black Klansman. He also wrote To Five oh, Bloods. He's basically Spike Lee's partner. I watched that and I was, thinking to myself, this would be so incredible to watch in a movie theater. You know, it's a, yeah. a bloody movie with, you know, it's just, it's so good. I was just like, this would be so much better in a theater. But anyway, the independent films are making way more of a push right now for press. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think something really uh, funny is, I don't know on Instagram if, or, or Twitter, but if you follow like support indie films, like hashtag independent films, hashtag indie films, it really gives you a lot of information on, on movies that are coming out. And I actually oh. really pride myself and my podcast on shedding light, um, you know, for independent films. So, so they get watched because so many actors and actresses do these movies because they, you know, they can't always get studio films and nor do they always want studio films. Sometimes they prefer independent films because they have more of a, you know, a creative say and they have more, there's more time to, you know, work on scenes and do things on your own. And and this is all things that I've gathered from talking to different actors and actresses and directors, you know, throughout the the last year. Um, So I will say, you know, there have been, and I don't know if you've seen them, but there've been some great films that came out like the 24th, um, like The Vanished, which is a movie with Anne Heche and Thomas Jane. Oh. That one was so, so entertaining. Um, Antebellum with Janelle Monet. That was, to do what, I mean, that was incredible. I was like, oh my gosh. So I think that um, the films are out there. They really mm-hmm. are. You just have to really, you have to really pay attention at this point. Um, and you, you know, you got to just give it a shot, even though it's, you know, it doesn't say Paramount or Universal. You got to give it a shot. No, I agree. My thing is watching from home. Uh, you know, I, it was during the pandemic. I finally learned that my Amazon Fire Stick, I can actually connect Bluetooth headphones to, which was the best thing that could have happened to me Ooh. to give me the sound that I want of a movie theater. But yeah. I don't have the attention span to sit on my couch or on my lazy boy and watch a movie. <laughs> I have to be in a theater, so I don't have any other reason but to sit and watch the movie. That's my hardest problem. I, Even I totally get you. Oh my gosh, I so get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a workaholic, so I gotta. I'm, I have my computer yeah. in front of me, and I'm looking up. So if I'm gonna look up, you gotta give me a reason to like put my computer table away. Yeah. So I will actually sit up, put my mm-hmm. ottoman up, and watch a flick, and grab some popcorn. All of that. Like I have to have the whole experience. Yes. So it is tough, and I just it's unfortunate. That's a great point. Some people really do need the whole experience, and I while I miss it, I still you know I'm still going to watch movies. But again, I have a, a different issue. I'm more like I fall asleep really easily during movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if I'm not in a theater, it definitely, I will say it takes me like, you know, I have to like either buy it or make sure I rent it for two days because, or whatever, three days, because I, yeah. it'll take me two times to get through it. Cause I just pass out. So well, they make those theaters very cold in there. So it gets kind of cozy on those nice leather seats. And all yeah, things. exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I, it's funny because I kept thinking to myself, well, you know, if theaters open, in New York City, will I be comfortable going? And I think that, um, you know, I live right by 86th Street. Am I comfortable going to 86th Street? No. Those theaters, I mean, before when I was going, I felt disgusting sitting in those seats that I've probably been (laughs) farted in a million times. And you know what I mean? Like, though, that was a gross theater. Um, So I probably wouldn't go there to that AMC. But there are theaters like Cine Bistro on 61st Street, which are brand new. They have the reclining chairs and they Mm -hmm. serve alcohol and they had like a full menu and it was only there for like a year before it closed so i would 100 percent go there and and they were on it you know those people were sanitizing they were you know so it's funny i thought about that the other day like which theaters will i be comfortable going to oh no the cineplex i think the big cineplex is i would still go to amc and and i have regal and a cinemark over here absolutely i would go Mm. i just yeah for my my thing is just i want to be able to go friday nights i want to go opening night 
And that's what I want. It's like, I can't have it any other way. Yeah. But, oh, my God, I'm so like, you know, I'm hoping Christmas Day. There's a couple of movies still re- scheduled to come out. I'm hoping they stay stay on the schedule. Otherwise, we have to wait till January. I guess the only thing I can take as a positive out of it is that the schedule. That's the other thing I don't understand is why the movie schedule, why everybody decided to push off. Take some chances, people, because, I you know, know, that you're going to stagger that schedule. Now, it's going to be so crowded next year. Next year's movie season is going to be phenomenal because yeah. there's just so many, so many blockbusters they pushed off. I'm like, you're going to give us like a summer and spring of, uh, of blockbusters. I'm like, <laughs> we're not going to know what to do. <laughs> I'm going to like, I'm, I'm going I'm to have to go double time on, on movies like Friday and Saturdays. I'm going to have to go like Friday, Saturday night, just nonstop, nonstop, yeah. nonstop. But at least yeah, it's going to come back and at least I got a little taste of it. And you know, I'll find a way, but I do agree with you with the independent movies. I need to go catch more of those. It's just like I said, the t- attention span is yeah. kind of tough. Now, I want to take it with a positive part here. I want to get us back to a positive uh, spin as we wrap things up. Yeah. Because I absolutely agree with you that, you know, the creativity, the people that are creative, that, that are able to go and put themselves out for performances, it is interesting. Now, CBS New York recently put out a report, WCBS TV. The city's alive again, they report, with all kinds of performances from Manhattan to Queens. Talented actors and actresses have been hitting the streets, bringing New Yorkers new kinds of entertainment. They refer to the return of Broadway being heard along the waterfront in Astoria as actors and actresses took to the stage for a drive-in, socially distanced live performance of Fan of the Opera mixed in with the movie itself. At the Kimberly Hotel in Midtown, a touch of Broadway was brought to guests dining on the rooftop while three miles away in Washington Square Park, a theatrical walking tour was taking place. So some entertainers have been finding some creative compromise, Lauren. And talk to me about, you told me a little bit what you've been hearing, but in that same realm, what have you been seeing out there that you've caught yourself you did tell me about what you did catch what other things have you heard about that new york city residents are being entertained by now to kind of give that sense of the entertainment that they're missing well you know you see a lot of um established Broadway stars offering a lot of classes over mm-hmm. Zoom. I've noticed that. Um, I think there's something called Broadway Plus where they offer, you know, a singing lesson or, or a, you know, a, um, not like a TED Talk, but you know what I mean by, yeah. I think the other day it was Laura Osnes. And, and again, these are things that normally you probably wouldn't get to experience if we were not in um, a global pandemic. You're, you know, she's got a huge cult following. She's like a Disney princess, a Broadway star. Mm-hmm. And, and again, you wouldn't get to see someone like her um, and, and have something personalized for you if, if this wasn't happening. So they're finding other outlets. And I think, I don't know what that place is called. That I, and it's uh, not coming to me, but there, there is like a drive-in theater stage in a store. I think it starts with an R that you just mentioned. I don't know if you know what it's called, um, but they've had a couple press releases that I've, I've been getting saying, oh, it's opening night for, you know, whatever they're doing at this like drive-in in Astoria, but it's like a stage as well. Um, you know, I'd have to find it, but, but I thought that was, that was super cool. Um, let me... Are you finding it? I'm trying to look for it right now. I'm trying to see if I can find out what it's... Yeah, uh, I know. I, it's not... It's totally... I'm drawing a blank here. Um, yeah, I can't Gosh. find out the bat. That's okay. Oh, Radio Park. Okay. <laughs> Is it yes, Radio Park? I think that's it. There we I go. Think New York. That's it. Yeah, um, I'm seeing that story right now. It's a new Broadway theme theater yes. drive in. That's the one. Okay. I'll send you a link to that. So yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what what do they just do? They just That's the one I mentioned that the fan of the opera. That is uh, the one that did it. Yeah, that's the one. And uh yeah, 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 yeah. fifty thousand exactly. square feet open air cultural. Uh so so they did a thing where they actually had performances yeah. Broadway stars also had an 11 piece orchestra. So they did put something out there that was quite interesting. Yes, like and they did so there was purple purple rain um Correct. this was last Thursday. I'm actually I'm reading this press press release that I got and I actually it's funny I couldn't believe it cuz it was like it said 6 p.m. press check in 6:15 the carpet begins and 7 p.m. performance begins. So I think part of me was like is this really happening? I didn't even believe it. So I did not respond, but on the, the guest list, they had people like, um, Titus Burgess, Marty Gould Cummings, Condola Rashad, uh, from Billions. So there was like a fair amount of people, um, you know, on this, on this list, but it says, uh, Radio Park is a brand new Broadway centric drive-in movie experience featuring live performances at Hallett's Points Play at 50,000. So yeah, you just said that. Okay. So yeah, it features, the big screen, movie style concessions, food trucks, and more. And $75 a group. That's not that bad. 
No, I mean, again, I haven't been there yet, but I mean, maybe it's it's worth checking out. I think and you part of me, the East River and the Manhattan skyline. I mean, I'm yes, looking at a picture I, right I now. It is gone. Cool. I, now I'm kicking myself. I totally should have gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's also just like I don't know. Maybe it was raining that night. I don't remember it could be, because the weather is. I mean, I imagine the weather's gotten a little bit better. The fall and the leaves have all come to the ground. So. It's yeah, not it's bad been now. weird, the weather. Like, it's been cold, and it's been hot, and it's just, it's strange, but I know, whatever, whatever. It comes from New York, we get all the rain clouds, because it's either cold, stationary, something or other. It just becomes rain for us all fall long. So that's yes, what totally. So. <laughs> so, Lauren, I really love that you've been on with us. I am so, I really thank you for taking time to go and talk to us today on the, on the Broadcasters Podcast. Now, yeah, website for the Red Carpet Rendezvous, your weekly podcast is on thecarpet.com. What a great URL. And also thank available you. all major podcast portals. I see you on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and so many others, I'm sure. Uh, yep. The marketing firm is Magic Shack, M A G I C S S H A K dot com. Uh, real quickly, for those that yep. want to learn about Magic Shack, uh, tell us about uh, what you're doing there and how they can get also get involved there. So we do performance marketing videos. Um, Again, we do everything from Broadway to corporate. So we'll host a Broadway opening night. We'll put together a video of, you know, why people should see it. Um, and then, you know, the PR company and the, and the theater company can push it out there. And same goes for, for corporate, why people should work at your company or if you have... Um, you have sort of uh, anything that you want to do um, in terms of marketing for your business. We are here and we are ready to go with video. So um, it's, it's, it's a great time. I, I really, really enjoy what I do. Fantastic. And then finally, uh, just for our listeners, and, you know, how can they go ahead and also keep up with how they can learn about what you're working on and how they can stay mm -hmm. connected with you, say, social media? Um, my Instagram is probably the best place. It's at Lauren underscore interviews. Fantastic. Lauren Collin, again, <laughs> entertainment reporter, host of the Red Carpet Rendezvous podcast. What day does that show normally drop? Wednesdays. All right. It drops. And again, yep. on thecarpet.com is where you find the show. Lauren Collin, thank you so much for being on with us. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. It was so much fun. I really appreciate it.